Hello and welcome to this Miniatures Apothecary Dominator Cohort painting video. Well, sort of. There's painting involved. <laughs> I hope everyone is doing well. This is the first video after the move, so uh, apologies for video quality um, and audio. I'm still getting used to like the new setup, uh, lighting and, and the space we've got and sound and everything else, so I do apologize. So I decided that I was going to paint these up uh, and enter them into the Horus Heresy Open Day painting competition. I always had on my bucket list getting involved uh, with like the Golden Demon Awards or something like that at some point. Um, so this was sort of a practice run as it were, seeing how far I could push my skills and what new techniques that I could learn and sort of like get an idea of what it's like I've never really entered into to painting competitions in the past I've done one or two and I've never never placed in them it's been more like the excitement from just being a part of it I decided though that I was going to do this this dominate cohort the really interesting unit and the models are really fun to do I like painting cataphractic terminators uh, they're very similar to Mark III, which is possibly one of my favourite marks of patterns of armour. And it's the whole sort of glacier at the front and then ridges at the back, the combination of uh, some really nice smooth curved edges and sharp edges. So it's they, they were a lot of fun to paint and play around and try out some of these new techniques that I've learnt recently, as well as refine some existing techniques that either I've, I've learned from other people or I've picked up from the GW's How to Paint videos. Now I followed a very similar process to what I would normally do with the rest of my Iron Warriors but instead of using Lead Belcher as a base colour I used the actual Iron Warriors paint uh, and then gave it a wash with Null Oil. I found that there was a slight, not massive difference in um, paint once it had dried with the wash over it but enough of a difference that when it came to adding things like the trim and highlights there was a noticeable difference and it makes them stand out a bit more as they're an elite unit I wanted to make them pop and make them stand out as opposed to just that that standard sort of metallic colour. Now throughout the entire week that I painted these um, I was constantly questioning whether or not that I should be doing this you know should I actually be entering these guys into the painting competition or not you know am I good enough the you know, imposter syndrome decided it was going to rear its ugly head as it does in these situations however I'm, I'm really happy that I did actually do it because when it came to the day meeting some of the other people that had uh, entered the competition and speaking to them about how they felt it turns out that even though there was a difference in, in sort of skill level and, and talent um, everyone was having everyone kind of has the same feelings on the run up to a painting competition everyone has the same sort of thoughts in their head like are they good enough and you know, should they really be entering? You know, will they place? Will they win? You know, will they come away with a, a bronze, silver, or gold? For me personally, it was just the taking part. It literally was just the taking part. I think that it was kind of overshadowed as well, just by the excitement of going to the event. But for the most part, it was literally like, well, it's it's getting involved. It's being involved in a painting competition at one of the big events. That's really exciting. It's really cool and really enjoyable. Now what you're seeing visually at the moment is actually something that I've been working on a lot recently. Putting Drakari Violet over the top of uh, Flesh Terra's Red Contrast gives this nice dark uh, almost sort of maroon colour which I think really works for the Iron Warriors as well as some of the other legions as well because I've, I've noticed that other people do a very similar technique but they use blues um, and it gives this really sort of dark weathered look uh, as a good base layer to do further weathering on the leather work and 
it's something that I want to refine, I want to keep working on and, and see whether I can get some different effects. Maybe do a pre-shade with the, the Flesh Terror Red and then add the purple on over the top and see how that works. Uh, but at the moment it's sort of it's just refining that technique and it's really enjoyable just sort of getting getting that t technique down to a point where I'm happy that I will then replicate and use on the rest of the unit. So I've spoke to a number of people via Instagram and Twitter who have asked about uh, how I paint Iron Warriors. It is literally just the uh, Games Workshop Warhammer How to Paint Iron Warriors. I think they were actually painted a, a, a 40k Iron Warrior. But I use it for these heresy ones and, and it looks really nice and it's a really enjoyable paint scheme. It's quite relaxing. And one of the things that I really enjoy is the Seraphim Sepia Reichel and Flesh Shade washers to do the trim. Now on these guys I decided to do two layers worth of Seraphim Sepia and one Reichel and Flesh Shade. Which made it not noticeably different until I then added the highlights at a later point. And having one next to the other... Um, a couple of days later, like after the event, I placed one of these Terminators next to a normal uh, Iron Warrior. There is a significant difference. There was a lot more pop, a lot more oomph, um, and a lot more character to the unit because of that extra uh, layer of Seraphim Sepia, which I found really interesting and quite cool. And now, I spent a lot of time after each um, section of the miniature was painted, I spent a lot of time sort of staring at the at the miniature and checking for any imperfections and they were just so they were so clean it seemed almost criminal to then put battle damage and weathering on them because they did actually look really nice but i feel like i'm, I'm really into the weathering and stuff at the moment so it was it would have been rude not to do it the the main part that kind of took its time was yellow. Now I have tried all the different techniques, I've used pink as a base coat, I've tried contrast, washers, pre-shades, all of the different kind of things that, that are supposed to make yellow work a little bit better and I don't know, just just none of them seem to, to for me anyway, none of them seem to really work. I know they do work because I've seen other people do them. Um, but they, they don't seem to work for me and I don't know whether that's just because I'm pot dipper or because I'm not doing it right like I'm failing at something but either way the yellow was really time consuming it seemed to take me like an entire night just to do the yellow uh, ready for the hazard stripes and although that was time consuming it was still fun it was still enjoyable it was it's part of the miniature five hours later so I've said this before Painting Iron Warriors is, for me, is very relaxing. But there's one element in particular that I used to hate, and that's the hazard stripes. I used to hate it. I now really, really enjoy doing it. I mostly eyeball hazard stripes, particularly when it comes to like marine shoulder pads and things like that. But for larger mod models like the Mastodon or the Spartan or other tanks, it's I've used tape. With the Terminators, because they were going in for a competition, I wanted to get them perfect, I wanted to get them spot on. And it's that end result is so satisfying. Now I don't know whether this is ADHD brain or what it is, but peeling that tape off at the end of the process is just so satisfying. It scratches an itch at the back of my head and it makes all the hard work so much more worth it. If you've never tried hazard stripes before, I'd suggest using like a base, like a Sector Imperialis base or something like that. Get some tape, put it down, use your black temp, use black templar, and then at the end, peel it off slowly. It's like I don't know, I don't even know what to compare it to, other than just pure satisfaction. Now, something else I did a little bit different with these guys because. I normally do lead belcher base and then uh, null oil wash because the null oil dries so dark it kind of does all the uh, it does all the, the shading for you these guys because they're slightly lighter using the iron warrior I felt that they needed an extra shade 
so I went back with Agrax Earthshade and started picking out all the little recesses and the overlapping panels, mostly to the rear of the model, uh, as well as picking out some detail on the front. It kind of gives them a bit more oomph. I keep using the word oomph, it's the only way to describe it really. But it gave them a little bit more depth, uh, which I think was kind of, it came out really well. Another thing that I've tried to do more recently um, is add a certain amount of highlight to hazard stripes uh, in the form of flash gets yellow. Now, when it comes to like large panels, I don't generally just pick out bits willy-nilly. Um, it's mostly the sharper edges. Looking at hazard stripes on like uh, industrial vehicles or tanks, real world um, tanks that at that you don't generally f see a lot of light sourcing on them but you do if those hazard stripes go all the way to the very edge now i was following uh, rotate that fish um, his guide on how to do hazard stripes for quite a while uh, on bases when i did my cacaridons and he suggests using a seraphim sepia wash which is cool and it looks nice, but I feel over black uh, over the uh, the Iron Warriors, the Null Noil wash works a lot better. So I've I've been doing that. I've been using the Null Noil and then using uh, Flash Gitch Yellow and like Eshen Grey to then highlight um, highlight the hazard stripes themselves. Now another thing I did a little bit different with these. Uh, is using Stormhost Silver for a lot of the highlights. Now I know this is a paint that some people have said they don't like, they, they, they struggle to use it. I don't know whether this, again, this is because I'm a pot dipper on or something else I'm doing, but I actually really enjoy using this paint. It's, I find it really easy to use and it works wonders when highlighting metallics. Most of my basic warriors I don't highlight except for the trim with these guys though I felt that they needed a bit more and the extra highlight also worked when it came to the weathering because the pigment sort of dulls it down a little bit um, but there's still a noticeable highlight there it worked really well to give them an extra sort of a lower layer of highlights on areas that don't get um, immediate contact with a light source so at the moment you can see I've gone back to the leather work. Now this is a technique that I haven't quite, I wouldn't say mastered, mastered is probably the wrong word, but I haven't quite got to grasp with just yet. I end up leaving large splodges and failing to, to get the thin lines that you would expect to see on weathered leather. However, with enough varying coats of paint and, and uh, different shades of red it kind of blends into one and so eventually you do end up with this crisscross pattern that does look like weathered leather when I did this technique on my Sons of Horus I ended up using more purples than reds with the Iron Warriors I've used the reds because it adds that uh, colour it really pops and it stands out and I feel like the contrast between the metallic and these reds really works and this was again me pushing my skills to that next level because well I'm putting them in for a painting competition yeah okay I don't think they're gonna play so I don't think they're gonna win anything but I still want them to look nice I guess the benefit here and it's kind of laughable really is when you're doing things like weathering and battle damage especially when you're using like pigments or enamels like streaking grime things like that when you're trying out these new techniques particularly when you're going down the grim dark line of painting or just heavily weathered miniatures the whatever you're using the pigments or the enamels can in fact and do in fact hide a lot of sins so for me personally when it came to weathering the leather, particularly the, the tabard and stuff. The pigments then that I used, as well as things like the typhus corrosion to show mud, 
you know, they emphasised the mud that's probably got caked up in that leather. It kind of hid some of the larger splodges uh, as well as um, make them look, make it look a little bit better. You know, it made it look a lot more professional <laughs> than, than it probably actually was. So I've worked on these for over a week, technically speaking, because I built them before we moved and then painted them sort of shortly after we moved into the new place. We just got the painting set up painting area set up and they were a lot of fun at this point though in the video they're pretty much done but there's always that last little bit I like to do because it's the messy bit which is the weathering starting with the likes of typhus corrosion now I started using the the sponge work on the umbral wolves last year maybe the year before um, and I've really enjoyed it, it's a really messy technique and I feel like it works for certain armies as well as adds a little bit more depth, a bit more character, a bit more story. More recently however, in the last couple of months or so, when I was working on the Mastodon I accidentally splodged some Typhus Corrosion basically and when it dried I decided to paint inside the dry area with some Stormhall Silver and I found it gave a lot nicer, a lot cleaner effect especially when you couple it with the weathering pigment. It gives off this very unique, very cool looking, cool look to it, not looking but cool look to it to be honest. Um, in some ways it kind of makes the Stormhall Silver a bit brighter and in others it dulls it down and it makes it look a little bit more rusty and makes it look like a proper paint chip and I really enjoyed that, I thought that was really cool so I thought I'd try that now on these guys, on these, these this Dominator cohort in the hopes that I could replicate a similar effect and it was really easy now, like I said, I've done this in a way before, like on my other armies, Umbra Wolves, for example, with you, you sponge on the highlight, you sponge on a black and a brown, you sponge on Typhus Corrosion, then you sponge on the metalwork. And it's very, sometimes it can be very busy, sometimes you can go too far. With these, particularly with the Iron Warriors, I found that, I found that this Typhus Corrosion sponge and then painting the Stormhole Silver within that is a lot simpler. Going for less is more works a lot better for the Iron Warriors than it would for any of my other armies. So this is definitely something that I'm going to carry on for the rest of the project, for the rest of the army. Because I just feel like it fits and it's visually it's more appealing, it's less busy. And it's in a way it's a less it's less steps as well because it's just a sponge paint and then done and then you're straight on to things like pigments or enamels and inks and more washes and things like that. After I did the battle damage I then worked on the base which unfortunately my bad I forgot to hit the record button but these guys did get full bases did all the weathering pigments and then they got a, a larger base for them all to sit on so I could then add a little bit more colour and a bit more story to the unit as opposed to them just being a flat unit. I feel like it worked and it was really enjoyable and it might be something that I do with other armies, with other units at a later date, you know, more elites or characters, things like that, as opposed to just the general run of the mill unit. But this was really enjoyable, not just doing this video but obviously the unit itself taking part in the competition and the event overall uh, I'm so excited for the Horus Heresy as I know many many other people are I'd just like to say thank you everyone for watching this video there will be more coming soon we're gonna try and aim for one a week fingers crossed um, but in the meantime just keep on hobbying take care of yourselves and I'll see you all next time